Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today we'll be taking a look at the project Holochain. Holochain is a decentralized project but it is not a blockchain. It's an entirely new technology that is claiming to be better than blockchain with no bottlenecks to scaling. Is it really better than blockchain? To learn more, keep watching this video. The first generation blockchain was Bitcoin, and Bitcoin achieved decentralization by having a network of nodes, and every transaction that was processed was processed and stored by every single node. The entire process was very secure, but also very slow. This is the first generation way of doing things. It is not sustainable. Everyone recognizes that now, and we are currently already in the third generation of blockchain technology and doing things much better. Holochain also identifies the unsustainable nature of Bitcoin's technology and tries to improve on it. But rather than create a better blockchain which will make it a third generation blockchain project, it uses what is called hash chains. Hash chain is actually an old technology that has existed before blockchain technology. Think of a hash as the signature mark that verifies data at a particular point before more data is added, so it's somewhat like a save function. And as more data and hashes get added, eventually it builds something like a digital fingerprint. That's what a hash chain is. Now imagine that each of these green dots are a hash chain. You will notice that unlike the blockchain diagram, they are not linked to each other, meaning they are not built on the motherboard like Ethereum, hash chains exist independently. Also, because each hash chain itself uses hash technology, which is a validating technology, each node or hash chain doesn't actually need the consensus of others to process data. In other words, it doesn't need to interact with other hash chains to confirm the data. This is different from Bitcoin, where all the information is processed by all the nodes and confirmed by multiple nodes before being recorded on the blockchain, making it a decentralized process. Now, Holochain's processing at a systemic level is actually centralized, meaning that each data is processed only on one hash chain. You might say, well, there are many different hash chains. Isn't there a lot of activity going on at the same time on different nodes? Isn't that decentralization? Not really. To be truly decentralized, what it means is that every different hash chain or different nodes will be processing the same data but in Holochain's case, each node or each hash chain is processing different data. The same data is only processed on one hash chain. This means that if a hacker was to come in to alter the data being processed, a hacker doesn't need to hack the entire system. The hacker only needs to hack one hash chain. There is still decentralizing happening within the hash chain itself, but it doesn't happen at the processing of data level, it happens at the storage and sharing level, and we will talk about this later. Now the advantage that hash chain has by not relying on the other nodes is scaling. The whole difficulty with blockchain and scaling is because people want the advantages of decentralization, which are things like security and fairness. And the difficulty with blockchain is to achieve decentralization while scaling. If I decided to adopt a system that I don't want to have consensus at the system processing level, then for that particular step, I have no bottleneck or restriction. This is why Holochain theoretically has no scaling limit. Think of it this way. Coming back to the green dots that exist independently, let's use transaction speed as an example. It's just an example. Now, because the project consists of independent chains, there is no latency. So the theoretical total transaction speed of the hollow chain platform is the total transaction speed of all the independent chains added up together. So if they have 10 chains running at 10,000 transactions per second, Technically, you can say that the system is running at the 100,000 transactions per second. But even though it sounds very fast and the system is running at 100,000 transactions per second, the actual experience of transaction on each hash chain is not 100,000 per second. It is still only 10,000 transactions per second. It remains the same. As opposed to, let's say, on Bitcoin, where every node is linked together. And if we say that we found a scaling solution that has increased Bitcoin's transaction from 6 transactions per second to 6,000 transactions per second, 
Every node on Bitcoin's ex network would experience a massive boost in transaction speed because they are all linked and the speed of Bitcoin as a platform is truly reflective of the processing power of every node. Let me give you a real life analogy. Let's say I do a transaction on Bitcoin today and it takes 10 seconds for the transaction to go through. If Bitcoin's transaction speed was to increase by 10 times, it will mean that my transaction would be 10 times faster, meaning the same transaction would now take only one second. If I'm doing a transaction on a hash chain like Holochain and it takes two seconds to do the transaction, let's say one year later, a lot more projects have now joined the Holochain network and the Holochain network, the total processing power has increased tenfold. But for me as a user, my experience of the transaction is still two seconds. It hasn't actually changed. So technically, Holochain as a network may have infinite scaling in inverted commas because you can build as many chains as you want and each chain is responsible for itself and doesn't weigh on the overall infrastructure. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that each individual hash chain has scaling. Can each individual hash chain actually increase its own processing power and speed up? Yes, it can and we'll come to that a little bit later. The reason why the Holochain system is designed in such a way is because the foundations of Holochain is actually philosophical. If you understand the Holochain project, you will understand that the team behind it is very big on what is called live stream philosophy. They have designed the technology trying to mimic after how life happens in nature. And in nature, not every decision needs to be checked. They give the example that if you were to post a tweet on Twitter, that tweet doesn't need a consensus to happen or it shouldn't need a consensus to happen. So not everything in life needs a consensus. That may be true, but not everything is as simple as a social media messaging app. This setup will work really well for a simple app like a messaging app, but what if you were to try and host a decentralized exchange or data from legal firms or medical clinics? What if you were a bank and you could choose between two systems? One is blockchain which does consensus and decentralization at the processing level and also at the storage level, whereas the other is only Holochain who does decentralization at the storage and sharing level only. Which would you choose? Why are banks using Ripple technology? Do you think that they would choose Holochain over Ripple? I'm not asking this in a sarcastic way. I don't actually know the answer, but I'm asking this genuinely with the hope of provoking some questions in people's minds. What I'm trying to say is everything comes with a cost. The more decentralized you are, the more security you have, but the worse your performance is. But vice versa, the less decentralized you become, the better your performance. Holochain may perform better than Bitcoin, but it will never be as secure as Bitcoin. Holochain does have security features and we're going to look at it now. So each hash chain or node has its own security feature that's called a DNA where every step of the data journey is kept secure and verified with signatures. The signed data is then recorded on the local chain but it doesn't just stay there, it is also shared on what is known as the DHT or distributed hash table if the data needs to be shared. So if there's a transaction that needs to happen with another party, then the data will be moved over to do the DHT. If the data doesn't have to go anywhere, like it's just a tweet on your personal Twitter, then it stays on the local chain itself. Now, when it goes on the DHT, there is a bit of a consensus happening. Think of it as the consensus that we understand on the blockchain, except this time it's for the purpose of safety sharing data. In other words, before any stored data on the local data chain can be shared, it must undergo validating through the DHT. Now, the concept of using DHT for file sharing is very similar to using torrents um, for those who use BitTorrents and other similar programs. In those torrents, right, they don't actually control the content of the data. That's why when you download a torrent, there's a very high chance you will also download a virus, okay? All a torrent does is to try and ensure a safe P2P transfer. So it only secures the transfer, but not the actual data content. Now, Holochain models their consensus around human interactions. So rather than being data-centered, it's actually agent-centered. Let me try and give you an analogy of what they do. This is a network topology of five agents running three different apps, and each different app is its own mini-network. 
Think of these nodes as people who can speak different languages, right? Imagine that the central person, this one, is me, and I can speak three different languages. I can speak English, Mandarin, and Russian. And I'm linked, number one, to the English network here, but I'm also linked to the Mandarin-speaking network as well as the Russian-speaking network. Now, if a malicious person or node tries to impersonate me, my friends who are in the same network will recognize that he is an imposter and reject his proposed trade. So that's how transactions in the network is protected. I will point out one weakness in this system though. The above system works on the assumption that the original source of data myself enters the network before the malicious party. That's how the other parties in the network can make friends with me quickly and know or recognize a malicious intent that is not me. But in the scenario where a malicious party enters the scene at the same time as the original source, the system will not be able to validate the transaction because it cannot tell who is the good guy. The chance of this happening is not high, but it certainly can happen. Now, because Holochain is a project that is modeled after natural livestream philosophy, there is no native currency or token for the project because exchange currency, as we understand, is seen as bad in that system and destroying the world. You might ask, but isn't there a holo token on CoinMarketCap? Yes, there is a holo token with an actual value, and there was also an ICO recently which raised a holo token or hot token, which can be purchased with Ethereum, a blockchain token. So this is where I need to explain. Holo chain is not the same as holo. Holo chain is the open source platform technology that we just described. It has no cryptocurrency attached to it. But getting that technology out to a lay person requires an interface, meaning that at some point you need to price the debt so that people can purchase it. That interface is called holo and holo token is the currency that runs holo. Holo is designed very smartly. For those of you who are familiar with the blockchain project Substratum, the concept is very similar. So when you run a program on your computer, like currently, it is likely that you still have excess processing power and bandwidth, etc. that is not being used. So you can sell this extra processing power to Holo, who accumulates the extra processing power and basically creates his own mini internet server. In return, you will get paid in Holo tokens. So this is a very attractive attractive fee because then it becomes very easy to mine if you call it mining um, the holo tokens the more users an app or hash chain has theoretically the more processing power each hash chain has so that's how an individual hash chain can scale and become faster i'm actually very interested to see if they can develop this technology because it sounds very attractive but this is the same almost the same technology as what substratum is trying to do which is to create a decentralized internet okay it's basically the same concept but substratum is still struggling to create the the, the project it's just a concept so i'll be very interested to see if um holochain can get their project off the ground before substratum and to compare the final products the last thing I want to mention about the attack is what happens when a node leaves the network. When people running Holochain turn off their device, they leave the network. Now, since the data was stored locally, what happens then? Well, a piece of the data is also given to other nodes so that the data is not lost when the node leaves. So it's basically sharding. To understand more about sharding, refer to our videos on Zilliqa and IOST, which are blockchain projects that utilize sharding. Now, one thing that did cross my mind is that given the way they use computers as mini processors and use sharding, it is possible that the running a node or running a, a mini processor or mini um, router can shorten the lifespan of a user's hard disk. Um, this is just my speculation, but if anyone has a chance, it might be worth asking the team this. Now, also because the data is stored across devices, example, your phone and my phone, the system will struggle with storing large data consistently or constantly as it will clog up users' hard drives. This is also available on their FAQ under the section of um, what should Holochain not be used for. Uh, this is their team, or rather this is some of their team members. There's actually a lot more of their team members listed on their website, a total of 32 members, and they are currently recruiting more. 
it's a very well balanced team with devs and finance and marketing partnership coordinator roles etc i'll run through the profiles of the two co-founders on this page the first is arthur brock he graduated from michigan state university with a degree in ai and comparative religion some of his more significant employment history includes being cto of dream team technologies founding board member for mao High business alliance founder of emerging leader labs founder of meta currency project and then hollow chain and hollow so he's definitely someone who knows the decentralized economy scene well and has a lot of startup experience the other co-founder listed here is eric harris braun who did computer science at yale and has been a board member on the new economics institute he was also the co-founder for emerging labs as well as well as meta currency project so these guys have worked together before tracing back to at least 2009 Eric is also the founder of Harris Braun Enterprise and Glassbeat Software Re. So he's a very experienced programmer with a lot of experience as well as in leading the company. You can go through the rest of the profiles in your own time. They have links to their LinkedIn and Twitter. And a lot of them have worked on the Meta Currency project as well. So this is definitely a team that is familiar with each other. Now, there isn't any advisors or partners or investors listed on the website. There also isn't any roadmap. So we don't really know when their testnet or mainnet is to be expected. Um, these are usually information that we would expect on any standard blockchain project website. But maybe these guys are trying to do things differently. Uh, advisors and partners do do help us to know that there is a layer of accountability that these guys have and also a roadmap helps the investors to know firstly what milestones to look out for but secondly it also again provide a layer of accountability that the team has milestones to hit that is public so they have to be working hard behind the scenes and not just um, sitting around after they have raised their initial fundraising I don't think that they will sit around and do nothing. I actually think this is a very hardworking team. Their GitHub is very active and I don't really know how to examine quotes on GitHub, but the people who do have apparently taken a look at their GitHub work and are very impressed with the amount and the quality of the coding done. So again, I'm pretty sure the team is busy, but still a roadmap, I believe, is a reasonable expectation for the token investor community uh, to expect. The Holo token is currently an ERC20 token. I did wonder why they are using a blockchain technology for their token. I understand that they do need a temporary token before their mainnet is launched, but I would have thought that they would be using their own technology for the interim token. Um, their pricing is very attractive at the moment. The token price currently is 1.6 cents that's because their circulating supply is very high sitting at 133 billion tokens on coin market cap in fact i think this is an error according to their social media the circulating supply should be the same as the total supply which is 25 percent more so 177 billion so for some reason it's listed less on coin market cap and the price may drop a bit once this is corrected but nonetheless this is a coin that is doing very well considering it's um Less than a month though, it has a market cap of 223 million and is currently sitting ranked number 88 on the market, so in the top 100. Okay, They also haven't been listed on a, any major exchanges yet and there is a lot of hype for this project. So my guess is that it probably is going to increase. You see, there's a lot of romantic idealism floating around where people are claiming that Holochain can scale to 1 billion transactions per second, that Holochain is better than blockchain in every way, and Holochain has no weakness, it is the future. Uh, I don't think that this is entirely true, but nonetheless, people are going around getting very excited about this project and buying into it. So the current crypto market is not driven by actual worth, but by hype. So I think with the hype that this coin has, in the fact that it's not listed on any major exchanges as well, I think in the short term, uh, this coin will likely go up significantly. That's just my guess. In the long term, who knows? It's a new technology, and like all new technology, no one can definitely confirm whether it will work or not. I do believe that Holochain will get off the ground as in they will have a working open platform for decentralized apps i'm not sure how they will compare with the blockchain moving forward now i'm going to put this out there every video i've seen of theirs on youtube so far has had them comparing themselves with bitcoin and ethereum 
Bitcoin and Bitcoin is the first generation blockchain. Ethereum is the second generation blockchain project. All right, they are both old school, and everyone recognizes that both of these uh, have a lot of flaws in their technology. If I was to take the top two hundred blockchain platforms today, okay, one hundred and ninety eight of them will be third generation blockchain projects, which means that only one percent, which is two projects, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, are not third generation blockchain projects. So if you have 99% of the market having, 99% uh, of the current market is third generation blockchain projects, which are much better than Bitcoin, why do you compare yourself in every video against the 1% Bitcoin, which is outdated, and then claim that you're fixing blockchain just because you're fixing the flaws that Bitcoin has? Bitcoin as a technology is almost dead these days. And if Bitcoin was to die, the technology that killed Bitcoin was not Holochain or Hashgraph, it was blockchain itself. Blockchain technology is evolving so rapidly. These days, new blockchain projects are being compared against other third generation projects like Cardano and EOS, and the likes which have very new and novel smart technology. There are new consensus algorithms in blockchain space like DPoS and proof of believability. Why are you still comparing yourself to proof of work and proof of stake? Um, you know, uh, and as I said before, blockchain technology is decentralizing at both the system processing and the storage and sharing level. Holochain is really decentralizing at the node level as well as the storage and sharing level. It works quick and fast for things like a messaging app, but if I was an institution with large transaction volumes like a bank, will I choose Holochain over Ripple? I'm not sure that they will. And this is not uh, really a conversation about the, the philosophy that banks are centralized and working with centralized authority. This is not about that. This is just an example to highlight whether the technology can support the high level of volume and large data and security required. So personally for me, I feel that the Holochain in this video so far has really generalized blockchain as the Bitcoin technology. And you know, I would love to see them give recognition to the third generation blockchain projects and actually compare themselves to those. I mean, comparing yourself to Bitcoin where every transaction uh, is processed and stored on every node and is not sustainable, that is a fact that we know and it's, it's really quite an old fact and we've moved past that a long while ago as a blockchain technology. So I would love to see them go head to head with Cardano to compare the tech and philosophy or to compare themselves against EOS and DPoS and the scope of the EOS project or to compare themselves against a blockchain and AI project like Matrix or a blockchain and hardware project like HPB, both of whom have great scalability. As a project, they also use sharding, but so does Zilliqa and IOST. They want to create a decentralized internet um, model for Hollow, but so does Substratum. And Tira is also doing the same, but only working with bandwidth. So they have some features that some of these projects will not have, but those projects also will have features that they don't have. I think it's actually really hard to say that one is definitely better than the other. So this is my own personal opinion, and the whole video is not professional advice, it's just my own personal opinion. I could be wrong. I do think Holochain is a new and smart technology. I do think they will be better than Bitcoin, but I don't necessarily think this equates to being better than blockchain on the whole. I don't think that Holochain is as perfect as some people think it is, even though I think it is a very good technology. But the degree to which people think it's perfect actually scares me. You know, um, like I go on the community and hear what people are talking and people kind of think this is the perfect technology that is going to solve all of decentralization problems. And I, I don't think so. In fact, I think there are several third generation blockchain projects currently that are very comparable to it. And that's only the third generation of blockchain projects. Blockchain technology is developing so rapidly, the fourth and fifth generations in the future will be even better. But fundamentally, I want to say I don't disagree with Holochain finding an alternative solution to decentralization. In fact, I will cheer them on because I believe that there is more than one solution to a problem and I'm glad that they're thinking outside the box. At the end of the day, all we are trying to achieve is decentralization. So I definitely wish the team and everyone who support them all the best. That's my thoughts on Holochain, guys. Let me know what you think of Holochain and post it in the comments below so that everyone can read it. We are trying to be an open community that way. I'm also very curious as to think, I, I'm very curious as to what people think of this project. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe. 
Also, do join our Telegram chat where we regularly have polls on what coins we should review next. And we also have very quality conversations about quality projects like this one. That's all for me now for now, guys. Take care, have a great day, and we will catch you soon.